guys, I'm Aaron. Thanks for checking out the channel again. If you have not subscribed already, please do check out this shirt. You can win it. All you have to do is put a comment in this video above. But today I just wanted to talk about another project in this book. If you haven't seen this book, I highly recommend it if you own a Porsche Boxster. So project 19 talks about changing your oxygen sensor. So that is what we're gonna do today. Now I've done a little bit of research on it and taken some notes. And I just wanna start by giving you some background information on this stuff. So what is an oxygen sensor for, or an O2 sensor, as you've probably heard it being called? For those of you not big into chemistry, O2 is oxygen. You probably know that an engine works by combusting gasoline mixed with oxygen. So your car uses some sensors and computers to make sure that it's getting the correct ratio. When you're at the correct ratio, your engine is making the most power and emitting the fewest emissions. Now on most Boxsters, there are four oxygen sensors. Oxygen sensors are part of the exhaust system and they're actually measuring the oxygen in the exhaust gases. So most boxers have four of these sensors. One of them is located in front of your catalytic converter and one of them is right after it. Now some of the early 97 through 99 boxers that are not in the US only came with two of these sensors and they were both before the cat. All boxers that were destined for the US have four though because of US emission standards. So when you hear some people saying that they only have two and you're confused about that, they're not in the US. Or conversely, if people are saying four and you only see two, you're probably not in the US. So based on the electronic signal provided to the ECU from this oxygen sensor, your car is actually going to change the amount of fuel that's delivered in hopes to maintain the optimum air to fuel ratio. So if your sensor is bad and it can't tell the computer what to do properly, you're probably gonna notice some things going on in your car. Some of these symptoms will include things like an irregular idle during warm up or an irregular idle when the engine's already warm. Your engine might not accelerate properly or backfire. Could just be general poor engine performance. You might notice that your fuel consumption is a lot higher than it usually is. Driving performance is just weak. The carbon monoxide concentration at idle is either too high or too low. And of course, most commonly, your check engine light might be on. If the signal that's being received by the computer from your oxygen sensor is out of range, most commonly it will turn on that light on your dash that says check engine. And usually if you plug up a diagnostics tool, you're gonna get some kind of error code that will help you to diagnose what is going on. So before just assuming that it's the oxygen sensor and that it is faulty, there could probably be something that's actually wrong in your car that is causing those values to be abnormal. And there's always a good chance that it is reading those values properly and doing its job to alert you to some other problem. So troubleshooting the complete fuel injection system is obviously way beyond the scope of this video. This is if you have determined that it is your oxygen sensor, I'm gonna show you how to replace it. Now this book recommends you change them every 30,000 miles. I think that's kind of a little extreme. They've never been changed on this car, I'm pretty sure. And it has 72,000 miles now, I think. Now I'm pretty sure that there's nothing wrong with the oxygen sensors in my car, but they have been in there for 72,000 miles and it's probably a good idea to change them now. I've done a lot of preventative maintenance on this car and hey, it's another reason to make a video. And the good news is on these cars, all you need is a 22 millimeter wrench. Of course, that's assuming that they're not seized on there, but after 72,000 miles and 22 years, there's probably a good chance that mine are seized on there. In that case, you're gonna want some penetrating oil and probably a source of heat. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is that my Boxster is a 98, so the ones that are 97 through 99 have one O2 sensor plug connection type at the end of the O2 sensor, and all Boxsters from 2000 to 2004 have a different connector. Nobody really points this out in all the videos and things that I have seen on this so far, so I was confused as to why I was seeing different things in different videos. Now, even though there are still four oxygen sensors for the 2000 to 2004 models, they're not identical like they were on the earlier ones. The two pre-cat ones have a longer cable and the two post-cat ones have a shorter cable. So you have to make sure you order the right part number for the sensor that you need. So if you are getting some codes and trying to diagnose them to see what's going on, it will probably talk about bank one and bank two because there are two sides of the exhaust system. Both sides have two oxygen sensors apiece. Now the one that they call bank two in the US, that is the driver's side. It is on the left of the car. If you're not in the US and your steering wheel is on the right side of the car, bank two is still the left side of the car. Bank one is the right side of the car. Passenger side in the US, driver side in the UK. 
and bank two is handling the things that come out of cylinders four, five, and six. So bank one is cylinders one, two, and three. So some of the popular error codes that I've heard about online that point to the O2 sensor are P0154 and P1119. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other codes out there. And like I said before, they don't all mean that the sensor's bad. It could be something else in your car. When you're looking for the parts, you're gonna notice that there is a Porsche part that is crazy expensive. And then there's the Bosch one that everybody uses, I guess. And these things are still not cheap. They're still almost 90 bucks a piece. And you're probably gonna need four of them. The Sensor de Oxygeno Premium. Oh, it's the uh, Premium Oxygen Sensor, sorry. But the Bosch part number is 13806 for this model year. And let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. So if you have an older Boxster, your connector is gonna look like this. If you have a newer Boxster, <laughs> newer Boxster, 2000 to 2004, it's gonna look like this. And one thing that's nice about these Bosch ones when you take this little cap off is you'll see that there's already anti-seize applied for you on there. So you won't need to add any yourself. And before we get under the car, while it's a lot easier, let me show you how these things work. This little red thing is a tab and this one has not been opened yet. So it's really stiff, but if you stick a screwdriver in there, you can pop it out and it opens to release. The other piece will slide out. I don't know if you can see in here, but there is like a little channel that when you seat the new one and press this in, it will pull itself into there and lock into place. All right, here's our 20 millimeter spanner, as uh, a lot of you guys like to call them, or a wrench. All right, the first step for most projects on this car are lifted up. So either put it on jack stands or if you have a quick jack. I prefer that. So excited that I am going to be building a house soon with a two post lift. So if you're interested in garage builds, feel free to follow along my progress with this link up here. But after we have it up in the air, we can get underneath and gain access to those sensors. So let me try to orient you by coming in from the back of the car underneath. And you can see on my car that I have the $250 eBay special exhaust here in the back and this comes to my stock cat right here and the first sensor the post cat sensor is right here and where this post cat sensor is you can see that the wiring goes up and behind the heat shield there so to disconnect that one I would have to pull back that heat shield to get to it it's called post cat because it is after the cat exhaust gases are flowing this way and this is where it exits if i follow it around a little bit here to the front you can see right here where this arrow is the what is called the pre-cat so at the beginning of the cat and if i zoom in here you can see the connector and you can even see the little red tab over here on the side it's not so red anymore but our connector is all clipped in here looks like the cable is just tucked down behind a little plastic clip so i'll just try to lift this up pull that little tab back a little there we go I just pull this connector up. I believe this whole thing will detach. See if I can show you this connector is starting to slide out of a little bracket that's holding it on. There we go. So that whole connector will just come out and it will give you room to pull it over to yourself. Get a little screwdriver under there and pop it open. All right, so that was a two-handed job to get the screwdriver in there and pop that little cover off, but it was the same as I showed you from before. Once you get that tab pulled all the way out, it will push this top piece up and out and it will release by itself. So then we're left with the sensor itself. So I got some PB blaster here. Before I even try, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it with some of this stuff. 
and let that soak for a bit. Now, if I back out so you can see where I am, I am under the wheel well here. So actually, if you remove this wheel, you'll have really easy access to this. Well, easier access to it, but we can still get to it with the wheel on. Now it's just a matter of getting our 22 millimeter wrench stuck in there and on the head of this sensor. And you wanna make sure that it is really well seated on there all the way down over all of the threads or, you know, bolt part, whatever you call the head of it. Because when you start putting torque on it, if you are just on them partly, you are gonna strip this thing really easily, I have a feeling, because it is really rusty looking. So now that it's on there, I'm gonna start trying to turn it and see what happens. <clears throat> mm. Yep, it's stuck on there pretty well. So I'm able to get my hand on these some of these suspension components and pull this wrench. Give myself a little better leverage. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Oh, man. It was like two turns and it's already hand loose, I think. Yeah, since the cable is disconnected, it makes it a lot easier to unscrew this. But yeah, you can... Oh, and out she comes. So yeah, you can see that this one is a little different looking than the new one, but I'm impressed at how easily that came out. I've seen some other horror stories that involved uh, using a torch around here to really heat up the pipe and uh, get that off. So if yours is stuck, what you do is use a torch to heat all around the area here on the pipe. Don't heat the sensor itself so that the pipe will expand and the sensor will not hopefully stay a little smaller and help you to get that thing out. But hopefully you're lucky like me and it's not that bad. So I just wanted to take these over to the bench and compare them. As you can see, we have the same connectors here. And here's our new tip versus our old tip. So with that little plastic cap removed from our new one, it exposes the anti-seize on there. And we wanna make sure not to touch the tip of this so that we don't get anything clogged up in there. It'll make this thing not work how it's supposed to. Uh, we're just gonna take our new one and carefully place it back in the hole. So after it's in the hole, we're just going to very gently hand thread it because the worst thing we can do is cross thread this thing. All right, you will see there at the bottom, there's also a little crush washer or it'll help it have a gas tight seal. All right, let's get started, it's pretty easy. Turn it as far as you can by hand and get our trusty spanner. I'm gonna start using spanner, I like it. Yeah. All right, let's say you want to get it on snug tight. So if you can get a torque wrench in here and going by the book, you want to get this to 40 foot pounds or 55 Newton meters. All right, this is the really hard part to show on video because you want to get my hand in here, it kind of gets in the way, but there is only one way that this thing will fit in there. You can see the grooves again here that are going to pull it tight. So you have to make sure that this is open like so. Make sure it's all the way open and just stick them together. Once you have them lined up, it'll seem like you can't push it in, but really what you have to do is start pressing this tab, the red tab in. And you will see that it will pull the connection down in there and lock it in. Now you can't pull them apart. Assembly and snap it back into its little retaining clip like it was before. So it goes in like that, and then remember you can tuck the wire back over that little clip. 
up there like so. And that's just gonna help ensure that the plastic wires don't come in contact with the hot exhaust and melt. And that's all there is guys. Literally one of the easiest projects I have done on this car. It took two tools and here is our old oxygen sensor. As always guys, I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel, give it some support with a thumbs up on this video and we'll see you next time.